this is Melissa Rule, and you're listening to Podcast by Mata. This is Taka Sen, and you're listening to Podcast by Mata. Hi, this is Melissa Monet, and you're watching to Podcast by Mata. Hi, this is Callie Klein, and you're listening to the Podcast by Mata. Hey, it's Jennifer Nguyen, and you're listening to the Podcast by Mata. Hey, how's everyone doing today? November 7th. You're listening to the podcast by Mata. I'm your host, Joe Mata. Hey, and as always, hey, we try to bring you the very best. And I mean the very best from the adult industry. And today, I believe we've done that. Uh, please welcome to the show, Tanalea. How are we doing? I'm good. How are you? All right. All right. Doing well. Doing well. Hey, can you uh, let the listeners know um, how you got into this fabulous industry of the adult industry? Um. Yeah, I actually... Um, probably for like three or four years prior to, I just started porn in April of this year. So I've only been doing it for like six months, but prior to that I did, um, I just like did basically the modeling thing and, um, it turned into like people, I got like a big following and then people would just ask me if I've sold my own sex tapes or solo videos or nudes. And then from there I started making a lot of money doing that and then, um, realized that it was like too much for me to handle. So then that's when I got my website and started making money, like selling my sex tapes on that. And then like the solo videos and shit. So yeah. Okay. All right. Now, um, I seen prior in a prior interview, um, you had brought up, uh, one of our past guests, Elizabeth Marks, that you used to be friends with, and there was a kind of story behind that? Yeah, um, she, we're still, she's technically, she says she's my wife. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she was modeling for Bad John Paul, who is actually the first person who ever shot me okay. um, in Austin. He's a, f- a photographer. He's my gay best friend. He used to live with me, but um, he actually wouldn't even shoot me for like six months. I had to beg him to shoot me, but she shot with him prior to doing Playboy, and mm-hmm. so Um, whenever she came to town, I guess, um, he told me for a while, he's like, Oh, you're going to love, um, her name's Shelby or, you know, she goes by Elizabeth, but her real name's Shelby. He's like, you're going to love Shelby. Like y'all are going to be so lesbian. I'm like, Oh, whatever. And then I met her and immediately we were like, Oh my God, like we love each other. And we just became really good friends. And then, um, she kind of introduced me to some people out in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had actually signed with a porn agency, when I was friends with her, she had signed with them as well, but she wasn't doing porn. She was going to do, I guess, um, something different, but we both ended up signing with this company. And I, and I didn't know at the time it was a porn agency until now that, that I know that I'm in a porn agency. I know it's a porn agency, but I didn't, uh, work with this company at all. Um, so yeah, so I met her through all that. And so she introduced me to porn people and then she had a baby and she's like not doing anything right now, but being a mom. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, what type of jobs did you have before you entered it, uh, the in- industry? Um, I've always worked for the state of Texas. When I was um, 18 or 19, I think I had my first job. Um, I worked for the uh, biomedical engineering at Texas A&M um, in that department. And then from there, I transferred to uh, the attorney general of Texas doing child support. And then from there, I worked for a private attorney. Um, and then the private attorney, I went and worked at a prison farm. And then from the prison farm, I went and worked at an actual men's prison unit, um, TDCJ unit. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I was also a flight attendant for a day. I worked at the bunny ranch for like two weeks. I was a sugar baby. I've done like everything (laughs) basically you can think of. I've probably done it or try to do. Okay. So how, how was it, uh, working for Dennis, Dennis Hoffer the first couple weeks? Oh, he's cool. Um, actually, I was introduced to him by Ron Jeremy. Um, I met Ron Jeremy at like some kind of podcast or like some kind of thing that I was <clears throat> some show I was doing and he was there. But he introduced me to Dennis. Dennis is really cool. Dennis definitely has his favorites, though. Um, he was very nice to me. He was always like around the house, too. And then like towards the end, the, na- the last week when I was like there, I was, everyone like was starting to like me. And like he invited me to his house to have like tacos for dinner with his girlfriend at the time and all this shit. So I was like getting and good and then i was like ah, and then i left and didn't go back so <laughs> <laughs> okay okay now uh we have a, a question from a fan who wants to remain anonymous uh do any of your tattoos have like a certain meaning behind them or are they just regular tattoos you just wanted to get um, originally when I first started getting tattoos, I got like shit that I saw on Pinterest. Cause I'm from like a very small town. So back then, <clears throat> back then and 
there in that time period, like the Pinteresty shit was like love quotes and like just like doves and like bullshit country stuff. So that's what I was getting at first. And then when I moved to Austin, Texas, on my first date, I got on a first date, I got my first colored tattoo, which was it's like a traditional um, uh, Dia de los Muertos like skull on my forearm. Okay. Um, and so that was like my first one. And then once I got that, I was like, okay, well, this is like what a real tattoo is supposed to look like. So then from there on, I like started using the same tattoo artist. And I kind of had a theme of like man eating bitches in history because I have like Cleopatra, I have a high priestess, I have a harpy, um, I have Medusa. And then I want to get like a siren and a succubus and maybe like. <clears throat> Anne Boleyn portrait or Guinevere or just like bitches in history that use their power to like overcome a man and rule even if they got killed like Anne Boleyn definitely died but right. she still kicked ass and like like all of their powers was by like seducing dudes so I think that's like kind of my cool theme that I'm like going for now but all of it's really just traditional just like shit that I liked or saw and told my tattoo artist and he drew it so okay all right all right there you go guys Hey, uh, now your first official scene was with James Dean. Um, yeah. How did that go? Because generally James is, is pretty rough in his scene. So how, how did that, that go for you? Yeah, um, he, he's not at all. Um, he's never been rough with me, which is funny. I don't know. I've never seen that side of him. So I don't know him in that way. But I've heard that um, all of our scenes, the first one we did, it's still not even out yet. Um, it was with Elegant Angel and it was an oil scene and it's still not out but that wasn't rough at all um like we film um like stuff at like my house right? and it's not like rough it's just like normal I don't know it's just different I guess it's our vibe is different than a lot of people's but I don't know I've never he's never ever been rough with me so I don't even know like not even a slap I don't think <laughs> <laughs> okay all right now um when when did you lose your virginity uh I was 15 okay okay and was it with a boyfriend or some random person? Yeah, it was some dude I was dating named Willie. It was like the worst name ever for a dude just lose your virginity to. Willie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it was like in his mom's van or some shit, too. Okay. Oh, wow. Now, um, were you pretty... Did you get pretty wild after that, or was it just random? Um, or... Yeah, I was like pretty skanky, I think, like up until... Um, let's see, I'm trying to... Um, like from 15 to like 17 probably. And then I started dating a dude seriously. And like I dated him until I was 20 something. And then I was single for a few months and I was like a pretty big hoe then. And then once I broke up with my um, ex-husband, um, which was in 2013, uh -huh. I was pretty much single until 2015 ish. So I like, banged a lot of dudes <laughs> <laughs> okay now what is uh what's your favorite scene that you've done so far and why um hmm. i'm gonna say the one that i did the other day i did a scene for naughty america with johnny castle and i never met him but mm -hmm. he's really 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 good looking and he's, everything about him is really nice and the scene was just like really good like, sometimes, like, whenever you go on set, like, some of the other actors, like, porn stars or whatever, um, flirt with you, like, just to try to get your vibe, like, before. Mm -hmm. And, like, he kind of, well, he, like, I think he wasn't sure if I was, like, super professional, if I was single or if I was, like, into it or not. But he was, right. like, flirting. It was, like, the cutest thing. So then our scene was, like, really hot because it was, like, a lot of, like, flirting, you know? Right, right. Good chemistry going there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now you did, you also did a, a scene with uh, recently with Girlfriend Films. Can you give yeah us that little, was the day before yeah. Can you give us a little idea of, of how that went and who was it was? was... Um, I was really excited because that was my first girl girl. It was like a girl girl my first girl girl scene that was like you know professional. Um, and it was um I thought it was I thought I was gonna get to have sex with Romy Rain that day and so did she. So we were super bummed. She we were both just the main characters in the script but right. um we did not get to have sex with each other but then um katie banks is also in it and so is michaela cox and michaela cox has the prettiest vagina like she it's like the prettiest thing i've seen in, in like a really long time <laughs> okay all right 
Yeah, that, uh, that with you, uh, Romy Reigns, that would have been a wild scene for sure. I know. We were so excited. Like, on the script, it said, well, it said, like, talent, and it said her name. And then we showed up, and we're like, hey, we're having sex today. And they're like, oh, no, you're not. And we're like, what? That's not right. <laughs> But it was cool. It still worked out. We still got to hang out. So I love seeing her. She's the first girl that I saw um, on my very first day when I went to go do my pretty girls. Her and Kenzie Taylor were the first girls I met. Okay. Now, is there someone in the industry other than Romy that you'd uh, like to work with that you haven't had a chance to yet? Um, yeah, one of my girlfriends, uh, Nicole Aniston, we were supposed to shoot for her website and for my website. We're both signed for Pooba. Um, mm-hmm. And it ended up not working out one day. So I'd still like to shoot with Nicole um as far as girls or guys or both uh either or i want to work with james again i want someone to um to book me and james together or um johnny castle again would be cool i really want to do a blow bang or um a i guess a a gang bang but i don't know i'm still confused can you do gang bangs with no anal i'm pretty sure you can that's what i want yeah Yeah, that's what i want to do Um, that's that's next on the list. I want to do a gangbang or blow bang. Okay. All right. Now, I just say I just hit the lottery and I'm gonna I want to produce a scene, and I want it to be with you, and you can have any performer from the past. Who would you choose and why? Oh man, um, I really like Jenna Jameson. I follow her on social media. She follows me. Um, she like made my life when I saw she started following me. Um, but I really like her a lot. Alexis Texas would be cool just because like, um, and then Riley Steele. I like her a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe like a no, never mind. I was gonna say like a skinny, good looking like back in the day Ron Jeremy, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I was gonna bring up. Yeah, what about Ron when he was uh, younger? I mean, I've had sex with old Ron, so like, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if I would like to be young Ron any different. Okay. Um, maybe, or maybe just a young James Dean. Maybe because that young James Dean would be like rougher with me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like that's that's when he was like accused of being like rough, like back then. But like, I don't know. Maybe that. Okay. I just like having sex with James, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, say, uh, what do you look for? Like, say you're looking for. Uh, a guy, you know, boyfriend-wise, what do you look for in a guy? Um, actually, I made a list the other day. My girlfriend was over here, and we were, like, joking around, but I definitely made a list. Mm-hmm. Should I grab it? Sure. Okay. I posted it on my Instagram the other day. Okay. I always say that I'm not looking for a boyfriend, but if I was, but I did leave off on this list. I forgot to put height requirement, and my height requ- requirement is at least six foot. Okay. Like, I don't like anything shorter than that. <laughs> on, on my list, it says must love snacks, weed, you must have a car, your penis has to be between eight to ten inches. Okay, so that's a little far fetched. I'm just doing that because I know guys lie about their penis size, anyways, so right. I'm just rounding it up. Um, and then says loyal, respectful, affectionate, not open. Like, this is not an open relationship. Like, the last guy that I was dating, right. I think he thought that he was dating me so that he could have threesomes or like shit like that. Like, right. that's not. Like, I'm going to have sex at work, and you can only have sex with me unless I say you have sex with someone else. Like, that's what I'm looking for. Um, And then I put no gay for pay, but you have to be queer friendly because I love going to WeHo, but I end up finding guys that will go be with a guy for money. And I'm not trying to have competition with men and women, so (laughs) just one woman. Um, Good job. You must be able to sleep over. Tattoos and beard preferred, um, can be bribed by blowjobs, likes to do outdoor shit, bring me flowers, cook, like shitty music and television, blue text only, meaning if you don't have an iPhone, we can't date because I can't do those green texts. Like that's, I hate waiting to see if you fucking read my text message or not. Um, and then I put get along with my friends and that's it. Okay. Not too much, right? No, not at all. That's yeah, it could always be way more. Now what, say... Say you find that, but the guy's five foot eight. Oh, man. Well, I guess, I mean, as long as he's taller than me by, like, a little. Well, no, I mean, I don't know. That would be tough. I don't like that. (laughs) I guess it just depends. If he was, like, super awesome, I'd be okay with it. Okay. All right. All right, guys, there you go. Five foot eight. If you're five foot eight or or taller, you, you got a chance, maybe. Yay. <laughs> now, now, have you ever uh, been recognized in public 
And if so, you have any uh, funny stories? Yeah, well, actually, I used to get recognized a lot in public before porn for, like, Snapchat, which is funny. In, like, mm-hmm. Austin, I'm, like, Snapchat famous. Or Texas, a lot of people recognize me. Um, and then also, I used to do, like, stuff with Vitaly a lot and some prank stuff on YouTube. So people would recognize me from that. Uh-huh. But the other day, the first person recognized me from porn. I was waiting outside of a restaurant with um, for Natalia and Natasha star uh-huh. and like some other porn stars and some guy walked by me. He goes, Oh, who are you? And his friend turned around and goes, she's a porn star. And I just smiled and I said, how do you know that? And he goes, I saw you on X rated. You're one of, that's one of my favorite sites. He's like, I saw you this morning. <laughs> He's like, I saw you on like a cum tribute or so, like facial tribute or some shit. And I was like, Oh, cool. <laughs> so it was like the first time someone had approached me from porn, but like, I've been like, people recognize me from, uh, social media and just like YouTube and shit like that. Cause I'm friends with a lot of people that have like more followers than me. So people right. always see me on their shit. Now. So say someone recognizes you out in public and they want to get a picture or autograph. Is that cool? Or do you just not, would you rather just wait for them to see what it's the, one of the trade shows? No, that's cool. I just don't like when people, cause a lot of people think that just because we do porn that like you can touch me and like grab my butt or grab my boob or some shit like that. Like, yeah, why exactly. would you think that I'm any different than any other person you would approach for a photo? Like be respectful. You wouldn't like want someone to walk up to your sister and grab her tit. Would you like, that's all I ask, you know, yeah. just treat me like you would not necessarily as your sister. If I, I know if you're a fan, you're not thinking of me as your sister or maybe you are. Um, which I do have some of those scenes out too, if you'd like to watch those. Um, but just be respectful, because I'm always really nice and uh, nice to fans and stuff. So I just ask that people are the same. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I basically try to I try to say this on on every show. It's like if you see your your favorite person out there, and they're okay with you coming up to them, go up, get your picture, sign your get the autograph, and, and go. Don't yeah. sit there and follow them around for, for a couple miles. And be creepy, whatever. yeah. Exactly. You know, just get your yeah. thing. You got it. They were nice enough to do that for you. And just go on your merry way and post it all over your Twitter and everything else you want. Yeah, and always if people tag me, I always, like, retweet shit, too. So it's, like, cool to see, like, when people do run into me and, like, take pictures or whatever and they post it. I always like seeing right. it and retweet it, so. All right. There you go. All right. Now, what is your... Uh, Favorite TV shows or and or movies you like to watch? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I started watching Teen Mom. Well, actually, so it started as 16 and Pregnant, like, when, probably 10 years ago. And mm-hmm. that's when I started watching that show. And um, now there are Teen Moms with, like, three kids each. So my favorite show is Teen Mom, which sounds ridiculous, but I grew up watching them. So okay. that I like to get really high and watch that because it's, like, such so dramatic whenever you're, like, stoned and you're watching this shit. Right. <laughs> so I like to watch that. Um, Shameless is a really uh, one of my favorite shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's starting back tonight or, like, this week or something. Um, and then, sorry, I'm trying to get a pan to put no, pizza that, in the oven. <laughs> um, and then just anything reality TV I like, really shitty reality television. Um, Big Love was one of my favorite shows. One Tree Hill, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, Friday Night Lights, shit like that. Okay, all right. Now and then the... movies like Blood In, Blood Out is one of my favorites, and oh, Clueless, oh, those yeah. two. Yeah, okay. Blood In, Blood Out is just so long, though. That's like a real commitment, because yeah. you can't just watch half of it. No, exactly. It's like that's like three hours. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's plus. like four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Well, yeah, well, Mi- Miklo Velika. <laughs> Miklo. <laughs> Yeah, I when I used to work at the prison, all of the <clears throat> it was funny because I was the commissary lady, so yeah. all of the inmates that would come to the window, um, there would be like a lot of young Hispanic ones. But yeah. I would be like, when they come to the window, I would like speak Spanish to them, and they like, oh, I don't speak Spanish, and then I would start calling calling them Mikolo. Milkweed. Yeah, but they didn't get it because they had, weren't even old enough to see that movie. So yeah. they were like, oh, and all the other like older Hispanic guys were like laughing at them. Yeah. <laughs> I was a gangster in prison. <laughs> now, um, the the one you were talking about with the teen mom, that's the one that originally had that Farrah Abraham in it, right? Yeah, I and I know Farrah. Like, she, whenever I lived in Austin and she lived in Austin, mm-hmm. she stripped at the strip club that I bartended at. Oh, okay. um, 
and she wasn't like she's okay like she's never been like super friendly to me but like we like are friends with a bunch of the same people and stuff too so i know she knows who i am but she she acts kind of bougie so she'd probably be like oh, oh. Yeah. you know like that kind of fake shit yeah there was there was something on the avn website about her uh-huh. and she and she's been trying to do her. cam soda she's just getting money she's just getting money deals is what she's doing she's yeah. smart she branded herself and she's oh, got yeah. a lot of money now so she's a smart businesswoman she's just kind of a shitty person yeah. which i don't like when shitty when bad like good shit happens to shitty people you know like oh, yeah. people act like assholes get like really nice things you know like given to them so. right. 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 now what what uh what type of food out of these three would you pick? Uh, Mexican, Chinese, or Italian? Mexican. Mexican. Is there a favorite you like? Well, it's got to be Tex-Mex. Okay. Okay. Which is different than, like, California Mexican food. Right, right, right. Yeah, because every, uh, well, matter of fact, next month my, my when my kids come over, they'll be, we'll be making the usual tamales. Oh, I love tamales. Yeah, my, kid, my kids will whip up, like, 25 to 30 dozen of them. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, a... I like tamales. Yeah, I love those things. Now, let's talk about your uh, your recent DVD releases that, that, that you have. Um, yeah, I think the latest one was the one with um, Archangel, the new Beginner's Luck series, I Want to Be a Porn Star, or whatever. Yeah. I was volume one. Right. Which was cool, so... Um, Hopefully I shoot with them again. We talked about shooting another, like, big thing, like, once this came out and all that. So hopefully now, that does, that happens. Now, also, you're, 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 you're also on the, that cover, right? Yeah, I'm the cover for that one. Okay. And then um, I think Interracial Massage 2 with Zero Tolerance. I think Katrina Jade's on the cover of that one. That's out. Uh-huh. Um, what else? Third, I have two orgies out. Yeah. Okay. Mothers and Brothers 2. Right, yeah. With Zero Tolerance, uh-huh. which is an IR orgy. And then um, Fuck Orgy, which is with Devil's Films. Yeah, Devil's Films. Yeah. And then uh, sedu- Seduced by the Boss's Wife 9? Yeah, with Mr. Pete. Okay, that'd be, that'd, that'd be a good one. Yeah, I like Mr. Pete. He he also, I did a scene with him for Elegant Angel for a squirt movie that's still not out yet. So okay. I have a lot of Elegant Angel stuff that's not out yet. Okay. Now, how about the, the Lex Breast Fest? Now, I'm assuming that's with Lexington, right? Yeah. How, how was that one? That was awesome. He was my first interracial. Um, so, and his penis is large, but it's nothing that I can't handle. So, yeah. I was like, everyone's like, oh, his stick is so big. And I'm like, damn, I could really handle that penis. I could probably do way bigger. <laughs> so, that's why now I want to do a double vag. Okay. Okay. So, let, like with, uh, who else is out there? Uh, Mo the Monster. Oh, I heard his is huge. Yeah, Shane. Dread. Shane Diesel. Dread. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's the other one? What's the guy person's name? Um, <laughs> Max boyfriend's penis was the biggest penis I've ever seen in my life. Oh wow. Yeah, and he was a civilian. Maybe he should get into the industry. <laughs> no, we we had in fights about that, but I ha- do have one of his sex tapes on my thing. Oh, okay. He was like, I, like soda can, like 10, 10, 11 at least. I don't know. It's huge. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> now what about your, uh, your, 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 where can the fans find you on social media? Um, Instagram is the Tana Lee. Um, my Twitter is also the Tana Lee. However, Right now I'm suspended and I have no freaking idea why and they still haven't gotten back to me. It's been like four days. Um, so, have, do you, on your um, I didn't have nudity on anything yeah, on my yeah, header. Yeah, on the cover, no. yeah, they'll 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 ban it right away for that. Mm-mm, I didn't. I think it's because they flagged my thing for spam because sometimes I retweet my old tweets because I like them to be on the top of my page. Right. So I don't have to go look for them and I think maybe that's what happened. But huh. anyway, so that. Hopefully we'll be back up. If not, I'll start a new one, um, which I have, but I haven't really been promoting it much because I want to wait and see what happens with my account. Right, um, right. So mostly Instagram and then Facebook. I have a Facebook fan page, which is Tana Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, Chat star, OnlyFans. Everything of mine is pretty much either the Tana Lee or Tana Lee. Okay. And, and your Snapchat? Uh, Big Red Ho. 
Okay. Right. Which I'm surprised that wasn't taken, but. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you have the the your premium one, which is big red VIP, right? Yeah, but you have to pay right. to be on that one. So. Right. That's the the premium one. Yeah, they have to pay you to get to get on that one. Mhm. Mm okay. And what what can the fans expect from you uh, for the rest of this year, and anything planned for 2018 for the fans? Um. Well, damn, I can't believe this year's already over. That's so depressing. Yeah. <laughs> it went by so fast. Um, hopefully I get a damn um, gangbang in by the end of this year. It probably won't be out until next year, but I want to start filming. I've been kind of like on a roll lately for like booking new companies that haven't shot me. So mm -hmm. hopefully shoot with a bunch of new companies. Um get my badass avian outfits lined up because i'm gonna i don't know if anyone remembers from last year but my avian outfits are like all one of a kind like custom made and every day it's something different but they're always like really fucking cool so that for avian um i'm uh, my website i'm shooting new content for my stuff so mm -hmm. i'm gonna be doing like a lot of spoof parody porns like i want to do funny shit or like movies that i like i want to do like scenes from them in a porn and just do like a big whatever like i'm wish i'm shooting with puba now so he lets me do whatever i want and like i can use whatever script i want wardrobe yeah. whatever um people that want to do content trade or hire or whatever work with me i get to basically choose what i want and just do whatever so okay. it's that, gonna be a lot more stuff like that who that's ivan right yeah 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 he's real he's real really really uh creative with it with, with his stuff that he shoots yeah, and like um, um, I don't know. There's an OG guy named Sasha who I'm starting to work with now. He has mm -hmm. a lot of ink stuff um for like tattoo and ink porn. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna be working with him doing that, finding other girls to work with us to do um like piercing stuff and like tattoo shit. It's just gonna be like a whole new like genre of like porn that's like alt related. But okay. yeah, so we're gonna be working on that. Um, yeah, just a bunch of like collabs with other porn stars because when you're not shooting right. scenes, there's nothing to do unless you are being proactive and trying to make content with porn stars. And a lot of fans like that. They want to see what people do when they're not on set. And oh, these yeah. porn stars that are actually trying to make money and make a brand for themselves that are smart are out there doing that. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Definitely shoot a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, you know, and just, yeah, it makes it more real because like everyone knows that like a lot of the set stuff is very like stop and go. Some of it's continuous if it's a good chemistry or whatever, but a lot right. of it's stop and move positions, change, whatever. But so yeah, it's cool to see like when people, what people are doing in their own time. Right, right. That's definitely for sure. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I think that's that's about that'll about cover it. Hey, I want to thank you uh, for being on. Yeah. Thank you for and, having me. And we'll definitely would love to have you back uh, here in the near future if you wanna if you got anything else you wanna promote and your yeah for sure members, for sure. Yeah, okay. that'd be cool. All right. Hey, I want to thank you for for being on, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. All right, hey, that was Tanalea, guys. Hey, man, that was a fabulous, fabulous show. Got a lot of content out there for you. And something we're going to do here, uh, I've got the top six rentals for October. This is from the avn.com website. Uh, number six, number six, Dread 2 from Jules Jordan Video. So you want to check that out. Number five, we have Secret Lesbian Diaries 5. That is from Girlfriend Films. Number four, Twisted Passions 22. And again, that's from Girlfriend Films. And number three, Les Girlfriend Films again. Wow, you guys are taking over here. Lesbian Psycho Drama 26. Now that sounds like... a Definitely a very interesting one for you guys to check out. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, that title. Number two, Women Seeking Women, 145. And again, that is from Girlfriend Films. Now, if they're in the top... Dang, they got all of them, but two looks like. Um, they must be doing something right with, 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 what, they're, with their, what they're making, guys and gals. Hey, uh... And here we go. I don't have a, well, I do kind of have a, I don't have an actual drum roll, but for number one, let's see if it kicks in here. 
There we go. Someone with a drum roll. <laughs> Interracial Icon 5. That is from Blacked.com Jules Jordan video. All right, guys. Hey, there you have it. The top six rentals for October from AVN.com. Get out there and uh, if any of the ones that weren't number one are your favorites, get out there and rent them. And in November, when we're doing a show, we'll give you the top November ones and we'll see if how these uh, stay on the charts, if they get knocked off, see if there's any new ones that come up and we'll, we'll get back to you. Hey, I want to thank you guys for listening. This is the podcast by Mata. Hey, and again, I want to give a big thanks to uh, our guest, Tana Lay, for, for being on. She was a, a fabulous host, or guest, excuse me, and uh, we're definitely looking forward to having her back. So, hey, guys, I want you guys to have a fabulous day out there. And remember, man, pay for it, pay for it, pay for it. Don't get on those other sites, man. Pay for your stuff. These people work hard what they do. You wouldn't want a, a, a plumber, you wouldn't expect a plumber to come over and, and do his work for free. So, uh, you know, we shouldn't expect them to to basically work for free. Pay for it, man. It doesn't cost that much. Go ahead and pay for it. All right, guys. Hey, again, podcast by Amada here. I'm your host, Joe Amada, and we'll see you next time.